LPT, stop staying longer than you have to at work. Sure, you may think that it gets you noticed for a promotion but it also gets you noticed to be used. If they're paying you for 8 hours, work no minute more and no minute less. I was told recently at work, by the boss, that I am the most reliable on-call person when they need it. She knows I travel an hour plus and had to tell me, it's okay to say no, and since then everything is making more sense. Passively hoping you'll be promoted is a losing strategy you want to be promoted, ask to be response you get be extremely informational about what steps you need to take. Get it in writing last review, my boss said 9 months to promotion. When I asked at the 9 month mark, he says he said 12 to 15 months. I reviewed my note to my brother, and it was 9 months. I expressed my annoyance to my CEO. CEO asked for 3 more months, to coincide with next review, among other things, has made me lose confidence in my boss. I had a boss who was very unimpressed by people working late. He saw it as evidence that they were inefficient and probably just phonies trying to get attention. Coming in early on the other. Ask your boss what you need to do in order to get promoted. Working an extra 15 minutes might help but more than likely it will involve thinking about your job and how to make it better for yourself, the team, company, customer. I like overtime in that way, that I can take said hours off on another day. Made 40h overtime last year, which gives me an additional week off this year which is cool limo. But that's probably not standard in the US as I'm living in Germany. Same is true for full time you die, your boss replaces you and your company moves on. Why sacrifice any more time to them than the obligated 40 hours, WK? Never take a on your own time. That depends on the, the industry, the company, the job, and the person's own motivations and work ethic. You do you. I have had great success in my career working as many hours as was required to ensure a success for the business. I also let my manager know when things became unreasonable as to share the load. If you walk out that door and knowingly let something fail then you can kiss promotion goodbye. Depends on the industry and a company you work a team leader in our IT department and work for a large biopharma company. Our supervisor is located across the country. I've seen him face to face once a year and we communicate once along as everything is running like a tight ship, I show up to work whenever and go home by 3 pm. I even send my teammates home early most of the time. This is such a non-pro tip. I don't know man, OT brings me to ill take my sweet time with whatever they want lol. Plus hard work equals unpromotable because they'll lower productivity if they move you up any overtime you make is work time and debt. You'll pay it back in exhaustion and burnout. Terrible advice for many many industries and attitude might work if you're flipping burgers but it won't in many jobs where you have large amounts of responsibility. This is a good manager. If she backs it up when you do say no, make good and sure you get and stay on her good side. That will do wonders for you, either at your job now, or when she takes another for a promo and brings you along. My mentor told me two things I will never forget. No is a complete sentence. And, never set yourself on fire so others can stay warm. Edit. Just also remembered. You don't need to attend every argument you're invited to. Greater than if you want to be promoted, ask to be some industries. Promotions aren't automatic nor based on accumulated merit. You have to apply for the role you wish to be promoted to. Including just leaving. It can be very informational about that. I was already doing 11 of the 20 tasks listed in the position above mine. The position that makes 3x what I make. Because they couldn't find anyone qualified and those tasks needed to be done, so I taught myself how to do them. I could have easily taken over the other nine, but those required access I didn't have. I applied for the higher position thinking this was a piece of cake. Surely they'll see how quickly I learned those 11 tasks and how good I was at them. I was pulled into an office and told my reach was bigger than my reality. Exact words. The man they finally hired to do the job lied on his resume and doesn't actually have the qualifications required for the job. He's constantly asking me what he should do. Every single thing I tell him is stuff that I have already proposed to the higher-ups myself. Every single thing was shot down when I proposed it because I'm, not and guess what? Now that he's, the one proposing these same exact things, they're getting done. Lol I'm only staying here until I'm done with my degree in two years. Then I'll work for myself. 
I'm so sick of the corporate world and old men not listening because I have a. It's ridiculous. My reach is my reality. Try and stop me. This is excellent advice. I have a story to back it up. When I interviewed at my current job three years ago, I said the most cringy thing to my would-be boss and in front of the company was asking if they promote from within and I said, because I want your job. It was so cringy to me at the time, but three years later, I have his job. I went from entry level to director of operations in three years in a field I had zero experience in before. My salary has increased by 230%. My boss brings up my interview all the time and honestly loved that I said I wanted his job. He needed to take on more responsibility and knew he had someone in line to take would also like to add that I'm a woman in a company that is 5% women. I was extremely intimidated by that fact, but please don't let it stop you from finding upward mobility. Polish up your resume and go get that promotion yourself. At my last job, I was promised to be in the $80-90k range in two years. The second year was bad for the company, so I waited one more. When year three came around and my boss nickel and dined me a couple thousand from what was promised, I went out and took a competitive offer of $120,000. That's why I left my first serious role in IT. Worked at a Fortune 500 company and told me I'd be contract to hire, but would be hired at six months. Six months came, no nine months. Nine months came, no a year. A year came and I gave them another chance. Within the month I went to my next company. Honestly I am unimpressed with leadership when I need to work late. Staff your organization appropriately. I did not sign up to do five people's jobs. I come in early just to center myself. My day feels terrible if I can't get settled and think about what I'm working on, but it is a fair point that I'm not getting paid for the extra hour. MGL I see those both as the same thing except where the out of hours is placed on the day and fooling certain people. I'm usually exhausted in the morning and get efficient in the evening, night. So in mandatory 9 to 5 jobs in end up staying later and later to get a little wee bit off productivity out of my job. Then I promptly burn out. It's not the standard, but some companies do told I have the option of taking OT worked as paid time off so I can bring the extra vacation on top of my regular 10 days paid. For sure on this one. Also, if you are salary and work more than your agreed upon hours, you are effectively devaluing yourself and giving your employer a discount on your work output. You know, I've actually had two people on a project I'm on die over the last three years. 1. I only knew her only for a specific task, but it was obvious everyone was shaken up and mourning, even though the work had to start over and still get other was an odd situation. The guy had worked there for 48 years, we were the client of another company, at a site in another state. He wanted to keep coming to work, I assume because that's what he'd done for his whole life. It was really awkward when it became obvious he wasn't mentally there anymore, and I'd get emails that almost looked like spam, scams from him, trying to follow up on an activity. The company put someone else on our project to help him, but let him keep participating, as he was able, which he wasn't. Honestly it was horribly sad to watch his mental decline, and created some awkwardness for the person, helping him, cause he wanted to keep doing things himself and not be helped. I even called their project manager, expressing concern about his health, and the project manager basically said, he's going through something right now, I'm concerned too, please utilize this other person we've assigned on the project, but we're not forcing this guy out if he wants to be here. Honestly, I'm left conflicted now that he's passed. I'm glad the company let him keep coming in if he really wanted to, but he also deserved time at home to rest. Then again, maybe he was trying to avoid just sitting around at home, waiting to die. He was the type of person who hadn't retired because he wouldn't know what to do with himself. I actually had that conversation with him, probably around 2am when I'd go on site and wind up at night shift. However, I also wish that we all didn't have to witness the slow, sad, mental decline. But, he left a legacy at that company, and his co-workers will remember him. My point is, from a business perspective, yes, you are replaceable and life, business goes on. But there are, people working in that company too, who are trying to do their best, and that can include trying to support you on a personal level. In more developed countries, the Nordic ones, everything we work over time is added to, flex, bank, which we then can use for time off whenever we want smiley face. At many companies, coming in early and leaving late is absolutely a way to get noticed and but you have to ask yourself whether that's a company culture you want to work in. Yeah this is just op grinding an axe. 
This is a good time to remember that a lot of Redditors are young, and likely don't have a ton of responsibility in their jobs have a job where if I don't sometimes put in more than 40 hours, a bunch of other people are going to get over. I also get paid a lot of money for said job. If I followed Ops advice, I would not have this job. 